Well, a groundbreaking exhibition currently on display at the Springfield Museums spotlights some of the world's most notorious con artists and examines how their talents, charm, and audacity beguiled the art world for much of the 20th century through the present day. Connecting Point contributor Jared Bowen from WGBH brings us the story about intent to deceive. Lining the walls of the Springfield Museums are the clean, evocative lines of Modigliani. Or is this the work of the troubled Italian master? Here hangs a piece by the iconic French artist Toulouse-Lautrec. Or is it here? In the new exhibition, Intent to Deceive, the lines are more than blurred. They are inspired, mimicked, and forged. On these walls, you'll find some of the world's greatest artists alongside the frauds who successfully taken them on. How prevalent is forgery in today's market? Um, in today's market, the statistic is that on the market right now, 30 to 40 percent of the works are forged. This is a show that's created rumbling in the art and museum worlds, an exhibition that dares to pull back the curtain on the grim and often embarrassing reality that for as long as there have been great artists, there have been equally great forgers making a fortune on their heels. One of the interesting things about them is that Technically, they're very good, um, and when you walk around the show, you would think that some of this work is authentic. Heather Haskell is director of the Damore Museum of Fine Arts, which, like most museums around the world, has identified forgeries in its own collections over the years. And what's the statistic for museums in terms of you forgeries? Know, I don't know what the statistic is for museums. Certainly these forgers, however, when they are interviewed, say that their work is hanging in museums. And they won't acknowledge which ones? No. <laughs> Intent to Deceive examines art fraud by way of some of the 20th century's greatest forgers, men who were good artists, but not good enough. For these artists, at least a number of them, they were very disappointed that the art world, the traditional art world, did not recognize their talent. And so this was a way to sort of get back at those established experts. Elmer de Horry painted roughly a thousand fakes before his 1976 suicide. Purchased by an unsuspecting collector, his quote-unquote Modigliani was eventually donated to a Miami museum where it hung unquestioned for 12 years, says curator Julia Courtney. Uh, Modigliani, because of his style, how he approached uh, painting, was pretty easy to forge. So that's another thing the forgers look for is, is um, masters that they can replicate fairly easily without having to have a really... Um, without having to do too much homework. And Modigliani, because the shapes are pretty large, uh, the lines and everything were, were easy for forgers to replicate. And this one is quite good. And you know, when we actually unpacked it, we were all like, is that one of the fakes or the real one? So it even fooled us momentarily. A premier Vermeer forger in the 1930s and 40s, Han von Meegeren was both masterful and audacious. Because Vermeer didn't create that many works, van Meegeren fabricated paintings rather than copied them in the style of Vermeer. And he actually created a whole time period in Vermeer's career that didn't exist, which um, came to be known as the religious period. Today, science is his undoing. The Bakelite plastic he mixed in with his paint to give his canvases an aged look now causes them to bend. He also went an extra step and he would actually paint on canvases that had paintings on them before that were older. So the surface was cracked. So he would um, paint on the surface of the canvas that was already old and, and he would roll them up and that would create this very mottled surface that we, you associate with an older painting. There is one story of redemption here and that's in the guise of John Myatt. Convicted in 1999 for fraud, he served a one year sentence and is now an acclaimed legitimate artist painting the girl with the pearl earring just because he can. How well does he succeed here? I think he's pretty darn close. I think if you hadn't seen it, and you'd seen it just on book covers and whatnot, it would be very convincing. Um, she's a bit larger than the original, um, and she's a bit more off-center, and a lot more blue tones are used in this painting than, than are used in the original. Myatt now lectures on forgery and paints so-called genuine fakes, but his legacy looms darkly. Some 200 of his forgeries entered the art market. 120 of those are still out there.
For Connecting Point, I'm Jared Bowen.